a question which I keep coming back to very often is um, that why do we perceive time at the speed that mm-hmm. we do? Like, I know you do some research in mm-hmm. like going to the lowest scale of time that you can yeah. measure, but that's right, which is way out of the range right. Of exactly. We perceive time. But like, why why do we perceive time at the rate that we do? Yeah, well, this is actually a question that probably somebody like Gene could have answered better, since he studies you know, the, so he studies bees and insects and, and and studies issues of like that. But so I'll give you an answer that somebody gave at a brain conference that I attended a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, and again, I went to this conference even though we don't do brain research because I thought, that sounds interesting. Maybe mm. I want to do research on that. So right. let's go to a meeting <laughs> and hear what the people are talking about. And so one of the ideas, talking about consciousness again actually, was this idea that there's brain circuitry in your thalamus and your cortex that sort of circles back and forth and is able to both examine sensory information as well as actually examine memory information. And, and, and uh, through this cycle actually sort of... Uh, become self-perceptive because, you know, as I said, you know, I can close my eyes and I know you're still there and you're still wearing that same you know, you know, shirt and everything. And I, don't, I can see you in my mind's eye, mm-hmm. right? And that's what convinces me that I'm conscious and not just a simulation, right. let's say, right? Because for all you know, I'm not conscious, right? I could just be some automaton that's doing <laughs> this stuff and talking, whatever. But you know you're conscious <laughs> and I think I know I'm conscious, so I'm willing to give you the benefit of the, uh, the doubt. Um, but... Uh, uh, Okay, this time he gave up you know, quickly, but it, it makes, mis, mix, makes mixes up my train of thought every time. So what was what was the uh, time? Uh, yeah, the perception of time. That's right. So at that meeting, um, I'm usually quite focused, but the ringing of that phone definitely <laughs> gets me uh, messed up. So talking about that, the uh, the circuitry actually in your brain operates actually at a rate of about 20 hertz. Okay, and so anything that runs faster than that, you perceive as a continuous phenomenon. So, for instance, when you're watching a movie, movie right, okay. you don't have to run a movie at 10,000 frames per second. Right. You can run it at 20 frames 20, per second. Yeah. It looks to you like it's a continuous movie. But if you run it at 10 frames per second, you begin to see that it's like mm-hmm. doing that. right? And for that same reason, for instance, sounds that are actually below 20 hertz, you perceive as separate knocks. right? If I go this 10 times per second, you don't think of that as a... Mm-hmm. But, but if I go, oh, you know, at 400 hertz or whatever, then you hear that as a... Pitch. A continuous, That's a continuous pitch right. now, and they go ah or whatever, and so you hear the pitch uh, going up and down. And so I think one element in human perception is ultimately how fast it's, the circuitry operates, and this actually has very physics-related reasons for it. Like how long does it take neurons to communicate, and how long do sort of certain feedback reactions and and uh, uh, you know, how long does the firing take? How long does it take for calcium waves to propagate and all these kinds of things? And so that's actually kind of the number you come up with if you sort of figure about mm. what the size of the brain is. So mice have much smaller brains than we do, uh, and birds actually have you know, similar sized brains and are quite capable of cognition, I would say. I mean, again, this is unproven, but a lot of people who study birds certainly would say that birds are able of cognition just like humans are. Um, and they do it with tinier brains. So actually, my guess would be that birds are have a different perception of time, right, right. Uh, like a much faster one. Right? Like a colibri, when it flies around, probably doesn't think of its wings as some blurred thing. It probably thinks of it as literally going, me right. really doing this. So, so like it's like dodging a bullet. Yeah. Like, right. May- yeah. Right, and a, a colibri may, uh, maybe it still can't dodge a bullet because that's really going fast. But but yeah, a colibri would be closer in its perception to yeah. t- of time to actually being able to dodge a bullet. And it's actually very interesting because it can change for humans too. So I'm, I'm sure you've been in situations where an accident is happening to you uh, like you're you're on black ice and you're falling off the bike, right? And at least my perception of this is that the moment that happens, I actually realize it's happening, and my perception slows way down. Uh, so I, I see much more, you know, in like slow motion detail what's about really? to happen, right? And but then the weird thing is, you would think that when that happens, now you could take action. Um, so like I can move to correct or something like that, right. but somehow my limbs are still not wor- uh, willing to do anything any faster. And so even though I know I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall over there, and whatever. And if I moved my arm like this way, it would be better. Whatever, I can't do it because my brain is not able to actually, you know, make that motion happen. And so it's kind of my perception is faster, but my body isn't willing to do anything any faster than I was <laughs> able to do it beforehand. So it's a kind of weird feeling. And I felt it a number of times when I had accidents. Uh, where like things slow down and I see the action in slow motion, I can see, okay, now I'm gonna crash and now my shoulder's gonna break and now this is gonna <laughs> but, but there's nothing I can do about it because I just can't move you know, fast enough. So it's kind of weird. So I think even humans have like different 
a range of perception of time. But you know, we're talking about a factor of two or three or something like that, not right, femtoseconds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, I, but I think there are good physical and physiological reasons for why we perceive time the way we do, and other organisms could perceive it differently, especially if there's some kind of a size scaling involved. And I never thought about that. It's this, you know, so after this, I'm going to probably go to Google and, and look it up. And you know, either somebody will have um, researched this already, or have another research project. <laughs> right, because I keep coming, keep coming back to it because I, I would imagine like, okay, what would the world look like if I perceived time at a faster rate? Or mm -hmm. yeah, like it would just be. So the 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 way I got to this question is I was looking at a strobe effect, mm -hmm. and that just blew my mind. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw absolutely. The, like how something <clears throat> that's moving so fast, you mm -hmm. can perceive it you as... You can still see it if you do it correctly. Like by the light, yeah, exactly, 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 the lights exactly, that are shining exactly. on it, right? Exactly, so exactly. I, I kept thinking, okay, what implications could this have? How can you make something that's going really fast and turn that into something really slow? Exactly, and it works in both directions. Like, you know, like one idle thought I occasionally have is, you know, there's 8 billion people on Earth, and while that's still a much smaller number of people than, let's say, neurons in a, in a human brain or anything like that, still it's a pretty large number. And how do we know, actually, there isn't some supra-organism um, that basically we are just elements of it, and you and I sitting here and coming together is like neurons making a connection and will disconnect again, whatever. And there's actually this very slow operating supra-organism that has these eight million elements mm. in it. And it's actually thinking deep, slow thoughts and solving problems that we haven't even thought of yet. Uh, because we don't actually realize that right. as right. a community in a society, we are just these elements. Like your individual neurons you know, don't know <laughs> right. what they're doing in the, in the bigger scheme of things, right? So maybe we are just you know, like a part of a, you know, a, a, mega, a, a meta brain or something like that. Who knows, right? I mean, I'm just making this up, but who knows? I mean, you could argue that we are in, in, in many ways, like just mm -hmm. like just how institutions and incentives just kind of. That's work. right. I mean, it's all it's very coherent, right? I mean, yeah. certainly humans don't interact in a random way at all. It's all very coherent with things getting built. But I'm actually going even one step further and saying, how do we know this is not like a thinking organism that actually is solving a math problem right now or something pretty concrete, right? Right. As opposed to just sort of a certain organization, right? right? Which needs the three yeah, of us yeah. to be talking right now. Someone else should be driving a car. Right. Someone else eating food. That's right. And right. all of this will come together in some way that somehow you know, helps with this. Right? Right. Just like our neurons are firing in complex ways that we don't fully understand, but it actually allows our thought processes to occur. Anyway, it's just I'm just making this up, but <laughs> who knows, right? Another research project. Yeah, another project. Well, <laughs> but as I said, ideas are like, I, you, I can come up with an idea per minute, right? Dime a dozen. So that's not a problem. Uh, in, in fact, you know, 